おかえりドクター。アーカナイトは、ファーマングマテリアルを使って、ファーマングマテリアルを使って、ファーマングマテリアルを使って、ファーマングマテリアルを使って、ファーマングマテリアルを使って、ファーマングマテリアルを使って、ファーマングマテリアルを使って、ファーマングマテリアルを使って、ファーマングマテリアルを使って、ファーマングマテリアルを使って、ファーマングマテリアルを使って、ファーマングマテリアルを使って、ファーマングマテリアルを使って、ファーマングマテリアルを使って、ファーマングマテリアルを使って、ファーマングマテリアルを使って、ファーマングマテリアルを使って、ファーマングマテリアルを使って、ファーマングマテリアルを使って、ファーマングマ So, the fact that you don't have the super OP swing swing man probably isn't the reason why you're losing the game. In fact, you can get severely punished for trying to min max your operators by only raising high rarity units. Relying on certain operators can be detrimental in stages that will hinder their use or even outright make them useless. The difference between a well built low rarity unit, s such as a 4 star or 5 star, and a 6 star isn't even that much. Remember that it is way less punishing to build a low rarity operator that you don't need than to build a high rarity operator that you don't even use. Now that we've addressed the rarity elephant in the room, this is the operator screen. By tapping this left side, you can view the stats of your operator. Attack and HP are self explanatory, defense means your operator takes decreased physical damage, and resistance means your operator takes reduced arts damage. Redeployment time indicates how fast your operator can be deployed again when they are cheated or dead. Cost is how much deployment points the operator takes to place down, and the block count indicates how many enemies the operator can block. Usually, ranged operators will not have to block any enemies at all since melee enemies can't even get on ranged tiles. ASPD is attack interval of the operator. On the bottom left, you can see the unit's range and class. Each operator has a unique talent shown on the bottom right of the screen. Traits hint at what archetype the operator is. You can increase the level of the operator with battle records, which you obtain from the tactical drill stages, and LMD, which you obtain from the cargo escort stages. Levels generally don't dictate whether you lose or win a battle. However, it is important to have at least your operators above a certain level to avoid being stat checked by the stage. For most players, you can have your operators at least like. 10 levels below the recommended stage level and get away with more precise timing on skills and placement. Skill levels are separate from operator levels. You'll have to use materials and skill books to level an operator's skills. All the operator skills are leveled simultaneously until skill level 7. Promotions require class chips, which you get from each class chip stages, respectively. These stages are only opened on certain days of the week, and promoting an operator from Elite 0 to Elite 1 usually unlocks a new talent or betters an existing talent, as well as unlocking the second skill. Only 4 stars and higher can be promoted again from Elite 1 to Elite 2. Elite 2, for a 4 star or 5 star operator, buffs their talent while 6 star operators unlock their third skill and a second talent. Promotions are generally more impactful than trying to get your operators to max level at Elite 2. To refer to the promoted stage of an operator, players usually refer to Elite as E, so an operator at Elite 0 would just be E0. Potentials, also shortened to POTS, buff the operator based on how many duplicates you acquire. At potential 1, you have acquired the operator, and at potential 6, the operator becomes maxed out on potentials. Masteries allow you to upgrade specific skills of an operator past the limit of 7. Each mastery takes high tier materials, so you need to make sure that you are investing in the right skill and the right operator. Masteries are more sanity efficient than leveling at making your operators more powerful. Masteries require the training room in the base, and the operator must be at Elite 2. At training room level 3, you can master your skill up to 3 times. a r c h n i t e s operators are divided into classes, and these classes can then be divided again into several archetypes. What is an archetype, you might ask? Archetypes present the operator as a specific role. Now, what does this mean exactly? Say you have a map filled with drones. Would you rather take a close ranged sniper or a sniper that prioritizes drones? And the answer should be obvious, and this answer also shows a bigger picture in Arknights. You can't compare operators as a whole across classes or archetypes. An anti air sniper would be great for drones. But a close range sniper is amazing for chunking through enemy defense. These two archetypes do two different things, and thus should not be compared. Niches are separate from archetypes and must be determined by looking at an individual operator basis. They aren't specifically defined, and niche is just a general term used for defining a specialized role. 
Uh, let's take an example. Comparing Spectre and Blaze, two guards of the same archetype, which is the AoE guard. An average player might say that uh, Blaze clearly overpowers Spectre in terms of damage, and subsequently Spectre should not be used. However, the statement is clearly false. If you take a closer look at Spectre's skill 2, she clearly has one over on Blaze. She can't die during her second skill duration. This redefines Spectre. Instead of relying on Spectre for damage, many veteran doctors rely on Spectre's S2 on making her an unkillable tank. This makes Spectre's niche completely different from Blaze, and so even comparing operators from the same archetype is risky and does not fully evaluate their entire kit. In general, it is always a good idea to have one operator of every archetype in your squad. As I said before in this video, rarity generally doesn't matter, so having a low rarity operator such as Ansel to fill your medical in the squad for a while isn't detrimental. Although some archetypes are used much more than others, there will be stages where you will struggle hard because you did not build an operator of a certain archetype. When building your squad, you should raise operators that expand your niches and archetypes. Then, once you've raised enough operators to fill these archetypes and niche holes, you can focus on whatever you use the most and build on that. Or you can just completely disregard this video and raise waifus, I won't judge. Obviously, I can't take an individual look on everyone's operators and determine who you should build next, you'll have to figure that out on your own. What makes Arknight so easy regarding material farming is that there's this fancy little neat button called Auto Deploy that does it for you. Once you beat a stage with 3 stars, Auto Deployer recreates your strategy. Mmm, kind of. This takes out the monotonous grind of most games, helping you save your brain power for the actually hard stuff. Since Arknights is heavily sanity driven, using your sanity with the most efficiency will help you save time in the future when you're raising operators. This makes efficient material farming extremely important. Regarding the supply stages for things such as LMD and battle records, it's always better to do the higher sanity ones. For general materials, it's a little more complicated. There are 5 tiers of materials. Tier 1 and 2 are easy to acquire. Generally, players farm stages that drop tier 3 materials, indicated by the blue border around the material, and craft the tier 4 and 5 materials using the tier 3 in the workshop at the base. There will be a link down in the description for a spreadsheet that shows what stages are best to farm for specific materials, as well as another link for drop percentages. I didn't make either of these, and proper credits go to the people who did the math. While I was explaining the operator screen, you may have noticed that I skipped over the trust bar, this last segment will explain trust and trust farming. Trust is this bar and is shown as a percentage. As you increase an operator's trust, they will gain stats depending on the operator, such as attack or HP. There are two ways of acquiring trust. Whenever you complete a stage with three stars, all your operators you bring into the stage will gain the same amount of trust points equivalent to the amount of sanity you spent on the stage. When farming for materials, players tend to use the lowest possible number of operators to clear the stage and then fill up the squad with operators they want to increase the trust of. This is called trust farming. The other way to acquire it is to have operators in your base at the daily reset. This comes in the form of a trust tap. If you assign an operator to be your base assistant, there is also another trust app for only base assistants. Note that these points don't directly equal the percentage. Uh, this chart shows you how many points you need for the next percentage. As the trust percentage increases, you unlock files of the operator, giving some extra little details and personal background that can give new perspectives on the operator. At 100%, the operator will stop gaining stat buffs. If your friend decides to use your operator, the operator they use will only have the trust percentage halved, meaning at 100% trust, they will only receive 50% of the trust benefits. However, at 200%, the friend will receive 100% of the trust stats in the operator. As a beginner with so many operators to choose from and raise, determining which one is the right choice can be hard. I hope this guide clears up some misconceptions beginners might have regarding raising operators. This video is a third part in a 14 part series, so if you want to see more of this beginner friendly content, be sure to like and subscribe.